Hi again, everybody. This video is sponsored by a contribution from Tamara from the West Coast. And here is her story. Thank you, Ollie, for speaking so much truth on your videos. Although I can totally understand logically what narcs do, as well as the aftermath of narcissistic abuse, there are days where I feel tortured by feelings of inadequacy, fear of being seen, and shame over making human mistakes. Video like yours help, one, remind me I'm not alone uh, in this, and two, challenge my cognitive distortions. I also respect how you are compassionate towards people's experience in a kind, no-nonsense manner. In this submission, I want to share some of my experience of narc abuse and its long-term impact. Because it's so easy to get caught up in inadequacies, I am also writing as a reminder to myself and hopefully to others that healing and the great things that come from it happens gradually and over time, not all at once. I am a female in her early 30s who in the last five years have only really started to go through the feelings from being narcissistically abused by my parents, mainly mother, and putting, it, and putting in the work to change the quality of my life. Currently, my life is not where I would prefer it to be, as I am 50 pounds overweight, do not have many close friends, not, have not been in a romantic relationship for five years, have social anxiety, and struggle to take care of myself daily. However, I am grateful that in facing issues from narcissistic abuse with supportive 12-step community, therapists, and friends, my work performance has, slightly, has significantly improved. I went on to get my advanced degree. I have hobbies that are, act, that are my actual interests. I interact with people and a recovery and a recovery community. I interact with people and a recovery community much more and have turned away from and turned away involvement with men who are showing red flags of narcissism. I am especially appreciative of this kind of the kind of kind-hearted individuals who take time to make others' lives easier and more enjoyable. I truly believe that I would not be able to say that I am grateful for these things if if grateful if these things I truly believe I would not be able to say that I am grateful for these things if I continue to believe I was going to be damaged forever by narcissistic abuse. <clears throat> As with other people who have written you, I have a story. I will try to keep mine short. Basically grew up as the scapegoat of the family. I was born with a sensitive temperament and by most parents' standard was not a troublesome child. The biggest issue I had pre-teen was that I had issues with organization, messy decks, bookshelf, etc. And I had trouble completing tasks such as turning the light off when I was done using it. However, <clears throat> my parents constantly labeled me as a failure, worthless, and stupid all because of that issue, even though I was a very good student and rarely had behavioral issues at school. They often complained that my issue with organization made them look bad. However, they had visible issues with organization and task completion as well. Yet, I was assigned to be the face of those issues. You're always the face of the narcissist issues. That's it. That's a very good line. You are the face of the narcissist issues. They're going to project it all onto you. <clears throat> One of the most painful parts of narc abuse was that my mother compared me down, compared me down to others daily. Part of the dinner conversation topics focused on how she and others were more skilled than me thinner than me, have more social ease than me, etc. If I had made a mistake or had done something not up to her standard, she would berate me about it all through the meal in front of the whole family. I remember during dinner one time, she was ridiculing me for how nervous I looked when I was accepting an award at school. When I asked her to stop because it was hurting my feelings, she scoffed and said, You have no right to your feelings because this is my house and I pay for the food you are eating and the electricity you are using right now. Ironically, my father was the only one employed 
outside of the home, while she stayed home and took care of the children and the home. Yes, she did cook and clean, take care of the kids, take the kids to school My father, while my father was at work. But the rest of the time, she took naps and watched trashy daytime TV shows. Yet, it is interesting, she took sole credit for paying for my material things for the family. At any rate, she constantly at any rate, constantly being compared down to her and others made me feel like a walking, ugly, unwanted mistake and that no matter what I did, I would not be good enough or worthy of love. She also would be physically abusive, which made me fear for my safety. She had this rule that if any of my younger sisters made a mistake, I would be beaten for it because I should have taught them to do things better. Same story as mine. She also threatened to cut off my hands with a knife. It made me hit myself hard in the face when I made certain mistakes. It made me lie down on the floor while she slapped me repeatedly in the face because she got angry about some mistake I made weeks ago. Throw water in my face. Hit me with a stick when I accidentally broke something and purposely aggravated wounds on my body such as pulling the, my, the side of my lip when I had a cold sore on the corner of it. I think she knew what she was doing was wrong because one time she broke a wooden toy over my two-year-old sister's head after a very faulty latch broke after she, my two-year-old sister, pulled it down. I wrote about how I was scared I was in my new, how scared I was in my new locked journal. journal. Both her and my father, the enabler, found it, broke the lock, and read that entry. They tore the entry, they tore out that entry, and yelled at me for writing stuff that would get my mother in trouble with the law. That day, my mother blamed me for putting my family's unity at risk if law enforcement had found that entry, and accused me of wanting to be on my own island since I was writing negative things about her. I was only writing the truth, but I remember being angry. But I remember being angry with myself for not being okay with my mother's behavior and be a good girl and, and just be forgiving. They always want to cover their tracks when they think you're going to talk. See, if my parents had showed fear of the police at that point, I would have went right to them. I would have went right to them. I just didn't think anybody gave a shit. They knew what they were doing was wrong. They're hiding the evidence. When they hide the evidence, I mean, that's just... This is only a snippet of how it was like experiencing narcissistic abuse as a child. Maybe some other time I'll write and describe how it was like for a teenager and a young adult. For now, I want to share that narcissistic abuse shook me every day to my core. Even when I moved away from home, her narcissistic abusive messages were so ingrained in me that I punished myself in some way, particularly when I made human mistakes. I isolated myself by only doing the bare minimum of things, interact, interacting with people if I had to. Not taking healthy, not taking healthy risks, overworking, and engaging in eating disordered behaviors. I am not proud to say say this, but when I showed up in the world, I also behaved narcissistically, because I felt so fragile and scared. I judged people just like my mother did. I looked at everything as power and a control game, just like she did, and I tried to make everything about myself, just to name a few things. As I have been learning, most people do not, most people do not in the long term respect or like individuals who behave this way or exude this type of energy. So that just reinforced the vicious cycle of isolation and drew very negative people into my life. As I mentioned earlier, I got into a 12 step, step program as part of my recovery from narcissistic abuse. Five years ago, my eating was out of control and I felt tired of constantly finding myself in negative circumstances. I gained a lot of weight and was concerned that I was just going to continue to go up as high as humanly possible if I did not get some kind of help. 
Today, I learned that part of my binge eating was an attempt to dull out the deep shame of narcissistic abuse. I also learned that binge eating was also an attempt to cope with the consequences of choices I made from that place of shame, such as not correcting mistakes at work, which caused me to be underemployed, not developing connections professionally, not having long-term enjoyable relationships and friendships, health issues and major material things breaking from my own neglect, and not being present for other people who truly came, who truly care about me. <clears throat> it is a struggle every day to show up in the world. I compare myself to others at work sometimes, and all of a sudden it is the end of the work day, and I have not gotten very much done. Some days I have intense anxiety about messing up in social and professional interactions that I approach them in a withdrawn or defensive manner or avoid them altogether by pretending I'm sick or something. When I do take care of myself, such as exercising or eating nutritious food, I feel empty, as if I'm doing it for someone who does not matter, which prompts me to overeat. However, thanks to people like you who speak the truth and help others through their recovery, the struggle is not as lonely or difficult. Thanks to people like you, the struggle can, be, can even be the creative place for empathy, strength, service to others, and resilience. I know you have experienced a lot of what I'm describing, especially the weight gain. Please share or reshare how you have changed the harmful choices you are making. You are making. Despite, despite feeling as if you were never good enough and, and wanting to go back to what is destructive because it is so familiar. Good question, good story. Very, very similar to my own. And, you know, with the eating, believe me, I have the same issues with the eating. Because it's filling, it's filling a hole in your, head, in, in, in your personality when you eat like that. It's, it's instant gratification. And the way you do it is, what I found is, the more I talk about these things and the more stories I get out there, the more it helps me stop myself when I start to slide. And I, I'm able to say, I don't need this. I don't need this in my life. I don't want it. I don't need it. I don't want to get fat. I don't want to be unhealthy. I don't want to feel like the way I used to feel anymore. That all comes with no contact. That all comes, okay, the longer you stay no contact and the longer you keep digging and keep investigating what happened in your past, the easier it is going to be to stop those slides and identify them. I've basically been able to keep the weight off now for going on a year and a half, two years. Like I'll gain a little bit and I'll stop. I'll gain, I'll stop, I'll go back. And that's okay. That's okay. But I'm not having the avalanche overeating fits where I used to have them anymore. And I would not be able to do that if I, if I had stayed in contact. Yes, I have the anxiety of narcissistic abuse. Yes, I have all that. But because those narcissists are not in my face at all times, and I'm being honest and talking about my past and seeing other people's similar stories like yours, I know I'm not alone and I know I don't need this and I know this is all a pattern and I know by eating the way I used to eat, I'm giving them what they want. Always remember that when you're about to binge, like this is what my mother would want. And fuck that. Fuck that. When you're about to slide, remember, that's what the narcissist wants you to do. And it'll be a lot easier to put that fork down or stop that abusive behavior, no matter what, what it is in your life for anybody who's watching. So thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you for your story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave, leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a narcissist you'd like to expose or a topic you'd like me to cover, you know what to do with the PayPal and my email link in the description box. And remember, when you do email me your story, please include at the top of the email, whether it's with or without contribution, and what name you'd like to go by. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon. Bye.